Hey folks, let's talk about dividing decimals. Today I decided to try a new way of taking a video. Um, I'm actually outside in my backyard enjoying a beautiful Sunday. So let's see how this works. Right now I have our notes set up just like I would like them to be in your notebook. Uh, for Mr. Woodruff and Mr. Rags class, if you guys don't have to take your notes this way, that's fine. But feel free to follow along with how I'm taking notes today to help you organize how we divide decimals. So let's first talk about our first example. We're going to divide one whole and six tenths divided by eight tenths. When looking at two dividing, dividing two decimals, we see that we have one number that's being divided by another number. We call the number that's being divided, we call that the dividend. The dividend. And we call the number that is being that it's being divided by called the divisor. This is good academic language for you to be able to be comfortable with because we are going to be talking about the dividend and the divisor, especially at the end of the video. But we'll be talking about that throughout the year as well. So if you haven't heard those, make sure that you write those down. So when I'm talking about my 1.6 divided by my 0.8, if I want to write that using long division, I know that my dividend 1.6 goes inside and my divisor 0.8 goes on the outside. Now, the difficulty with dividing decimals is that we have a decimal on the outside and then we're dividing it by another decimal on the inside. I don't exactly know off the top of my head how many times 8 tenths goes into 1 and 6 tenths, but there is a skill that I can use in order to help myself be able to divide these two numbers. And it has to deal with the divisor. I want to try to get my divisor to become a whole number. So I want to try to keep my divisor a whole number to keep my divisor a whole number. Now the only difficulty with that is I don't really exactly know how to make something that's a decimal into a whole number. But let's look about how we can rewrite 1.6 um, divided by 8 as a fraction. 1.6 is the same as saying 1.6 divided by 0 0.08, or 0 0.8, sorry. Now we see that with the fraction bar, we can't really exactly be able to divide these, but I know that in order to make an equivalent fraction, I can multiply both my numerator and denominator by 10, or 10 over 10, to help create an equivalent fraction. Over here, I know that 0, 0.8 times 10, when I multiply those out, I get 0, I get 8, and if I move my decimal place 1 to the right, and if I go down here to 80, I need to now move my decimal place 1 to the left. If you're having difficulty with this step right here, make sure that you go back and watch the multiplying decimals video that uh, Miss Woodruff gave us last week. So I know that if I multiply 0 0.8 times 10, I get a new number of equivalent to 8 and 1.6 when I multiply that together will give me 16. That's a lot more simple to be able to divide 16 and 8 than to be able to divide 1.6 and 0 0.8. So essentially what I've done here by multiplying it by 10, if I look back at my original equation, I can see that all I did was actually just move my decimal place once to the right. And because I did it to both my numerator and my denominator, every time I'm moving that, I'm moving my decimal one place to the, ref, to the right for both my dividend and my divisor. Now here is the big thing. When I am moving my dividend and I'm moving the decimal for that, I then create a new decimal at the end. I need to make sure that I then continue that new decimal up to the top part where my quotient or my answer is going to be. So I need to make sure that this step happens or else I'm going to get the wrong answer. 
Now, if I'm looking at this question, I still have the 0.8 and the 1.6, but really what we just did is try to make an easier problem of 8 and how much 16 is divided by 8. So that is exactly what we did here. So we have our new problem that's a lot easier to solve. So I know that 8 can't go into 1, but I know that 8 goes into 16 two times. 2 times 8 gives me 16, I subtract, I'm left with 0. So I know that my final answer is 1.6 divided by 0 0.8 gives me the answer of 2 wholes. Now we know that the dividend is this number and then it's being divided by the divisor and our answer is called the quotient. Sorry, you can't see that. It's a quotient. This is telling us what our two numbers after they're divided. That is our final answer. So that's example hey guys, so number So let's four. wrap up the video real quick. Um, I have some takeaways that I would like you to put in your notes. The first takeaway is the idea that when I am looking at a division problem, it is my dividend divided by my divisor is equal to my quotient. And I remember that for long division, that also is showing me that my divisor is on the outside, my dividend is on the inside, and my quotient is my answer on the top. My second takeaway for dividing decimals is that I want my divisor to be a whole number when dividing. So remember, if I have a decimal over here for my divisor, I want to be able to try to make that into a whole number. So we learned a skill today of being able to move our decimal. So if our third takeaway was if I move my decimal for my divisor, I move the decimal the same amount, and the same is the very big key, the same amount of spaces for my dividend. So right here, if I have my, my divisor and if I move it once to the right, I also need to be able to move my dividend once to the right as well. If there is nothing there, I add a zero and I bring my decimal up to the top. Last but not least, I want to remind you that the biggest thing about this is that decimals are cool. So don't fear decimals. Make sure that you are using them in your everyday lives. They deal a lot with money, and we want to be able to use them as much as possible. So thank you guys so much for watching. And just say a little bit of a goodbye from my backyard, and Callie is really nice and relaxing. So we'll see you guys in school tomorrow.